Werewolves, vampires, Bigfoot and aliens. All of these creatures are shrouded in mystery and myth. But is there something lurking closer to home here in Britain? big cats have been spotted nationwide for decades. With around 2,000 sightings on average a year, such a large number cannot be brushed off as a sheer coincidence or even someone's overactive imagination. So are there any truths behind these sightings or is it one large tale? I've decided to dig a little deeper to find out some key answers, such as what are these creatures that people are seeing, where have they come from, and what is the evidence to prove that they do exist? Well, I was walking my dog um, across these fields early one morning. It was, it was only just getting light. And um, as we were walking along here, I could see something in the distance. And at first I thought it was another dog. Mm. But when I looked closely, it looked more like cat shape. Yeah. Um, and as we got closer, I realised it actually was like a huge big black cat. So the animal or whatever it was was getting nearer. I realised in the end that whatever it was would at that position collide with myself and Sheba. And if the animal was at all ferocious, it might be very dangerous. So I thought I ought to somehow deflect it. And I lifted my left hand up like a policeman and my right hand to follow the direction of route. The animal came nearer and nearer even when I shouted Gur and I thought well this is it but at the very last moment and it was more than halfway across the road it did uh, exactly a right angle turn and started to run up the road. I was just driving back from work one day and uh, pulled into this little uh, here to uh, answer a phone call and um, while I was talking around the phone uh, I was just looking around and uh, I could see um, a black, big black cat um, on the ridge over there about probably 200 yards from here. My friend, uh, I, she saw something Christmas Day, she didn't know what it was. It was attacking her, one of their sheep, her partner's sheep, across the valley. She yelled. Um, and whatever it was, it jumped up and ran off. It had a, a hole in its neck, sort of about that sort of size. Um, but that was this Christmas, um, towards evening, when she was walking the Huskies. A search on the internet saw thousands of hits. It was quickly apparent that many people have shared or similar experiences. There are many websites put together to monitor, question and investigate these sightings. Some cover the whole of Britain, from Penzance to Hull, and others focus on a particular area where sightings are abundant. I wanted to see how the official bodies deal with these reports. How do the police cope with thousands of big cat sightings? I went to the heart of the mystery in Dorset. Um, initially, when I first sort of started to have these reports coming in, you think, well, this is a bit bizarre. Right, we should actually start recording these mm. um, for our reference. And also, I then wrote a policy on how, as a police force, we should record them and how we should deal with them. Uh, a three-pronged sort of approach to sightings. Um, then, potentially, if one were found... Uh, trapped or incapacitated, how do we deal with it? Mm -hmm. And then lastly, if one's found dead, the implications of that, the health and safety implications. Problem. Rutland and Leicestershire Panther Watch has been operating for around 20 years. Nigel Spencer explains how he gets witness reports. It's, uh, it can be a variety of sources. I mean, we're, as I say, we're part of the National um, Big Cats in Britain group and we get sightings coming in on that website nationally and from, from our area as well. So obviously if it's something within the Leicestershire area, I get informed and we can go out and investigate it or, or just put it down on our log report. 
one of the problems is people quite often won't report unless you happen to be in the right circumstances. So, for instance, it may be you pop into a garage to fill up with fuel and you're chatting to someone and it's like, oh, my mum saw one the other day, and you, and you get the report that way. Whereas if you hadn't done that, you probably wouldn't have got the report. Um, even uh, if you discounted 99.9% .9 of the reports we've ever taken, we've still got a number of reports where it would be very difficult, unless the person was actually lying, because we've got serving police officers, we've got um, wildlife professionals, that are encountering these animals at very close quarters. These aren't animals being seen on a hedge, you know, on a hillside half a mile away. These are animals that are in front of somebody's car bonnet. They're walking down the side of a vehicle. So, with credible witnesses and even Dorset police acknowledging the regular reports of big cat sightings, where have these creatures come from? It's been suggested that after the 1976 Dangerous Wild Animals Act came into force, some were released into the wild. But is this the case? When a lot of the early sightings were first being documented, it did coincide with people keeping them as pets, the Dangerous Wild Animals Act coming into force. Mm. And there are people on record who have said that when the act came in, they did release big cats because mm. they knew they didn't have the facilities that they would be expected to keep. They did measure up to it the only way, rather than have the cats destroyed or sent to a zoo would be to release them, so we know that happened. I don't hold so much from the escape from zoos because mm. you know, if an animal escapes, it's obviously in the zoo's interest to get it back. There's correct operating procedures you know, which we're expected to abide by. Mm. So I don't think a zoo would let a cat escape and not try and get it back. You wouldn't just you know, let it vanish and not do anything about it. Daryl Cook also believes these wild cats are released pets and explains issues that faced owners. For example, I know of a wolf enclosure, it's got two massive high fences, the inner fence is electrified, yeah. um, it's got 24 hour surveillance CCTV cameras on it and there's got to be someone on site 24 hours a day. Mm. That's the level of what was needed. You're faced with a bill in the 70s of 150 to 100,000 pound, that's a lot of money, I think people release them. Although there has been escapes from zoos, the generally the animals captured, DEFRA's own figures and documents that are released show that they've, they've escaped from zoos. Mm. Um, but generally they're recaptured very, very quickly. In March 2010, Natural England released a report stating that in the last five years there were 38 definite big cat sightings. It's often, again, it's difficult to you know, be absolutely sure of where they, they will have come from. Certainly the Dangerous Wild Animals Act is, is often cited as the point at which people uh, just took animals out and, and let them go because they didn't want to be bothered with having to get a licence and all that that entailed. Um, mm. And, you know, it's, it's quite feasible that a small number of animals were released. I can only speculate that if animals were released that they have since, you know, long since died. Yeah. And, and certainly that, you know, there's never been any establishment of a population because we, we would probably be talking about literally single figures of animals scattered across the country, mm. if, 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 if at all, just never been found or, or, or never reported as having been found. It would seem that the experts are strongly supporting the theory that these creatures are released pets from the 70s. Two other suggestions include escapees from travelling zoos and illegal imports from Europe. But if all of these are the possible origins of the big cats, then where is the evidence to show that they exist? High about 15 foot off the ground um, was a deer carcass really? that had been pulled up into the tree. Um, I'd suggest it's not the sort of thing poachers would do. They would take it away with them. Um, so it took a bit of explaining. You're talking about a couple of hundred pounds in weight or more. Yeah. Um, I certainly wouldn't want to try and get it up there. To actually get hard evidence, it's very difficult. We've got paw prints. Again, the paw prints are verified as coming from a leopard. Um, they're usually in isolated areas. So, for instance, the ones taken out of Ketton Quarry, the whole quarry is out of bounds to the general public. So we haven't got people walking dogs through there or anything. It's, um, yet we're getting these... Uh, sort of five inch uh, paw prints left in the clay overnight. We get a lot of sh animal kills and that where we can see the evidence that it was a big cat. The most important thing would probably be DNA evidence, but it's very difficult to, to get DNA testing done. 
nobody has seen a conclusive sighting of a big cat that I'm aware of. Yes. You'd see pug marks, it's off ground, you'd see bits of hair or coat on branches or you know thorns, that sort of stuff, you see feces. It's the typical sort of signs that you'd mm. see from any wild animal you get, you know, foxes, badgers, anything like that. Urine. The strong, strong smell of urine. Um, I'm smelling for that smell, which I've never smelt yet. It's, I've never had it hit me. Dead animals, um, feces, um, but again, I've never come across any feces. Even with thousands of witness reports, many unexplained sheep kills and credible paw print casts, do people think there really are wild cats in Britain? I do now. Yes, I was um, a bit sceptical before, but uh, now definitely, I think, uh, now I've seen it, I, I believe in it, yes. A, cl a clear yes, but they are not in huge numbers. I haven't seen one. Most of the big cat investigators haven't seen one, and we have got a vague idea where to look. So I think there's a huge urban myth that people want to see a big cat. It's exciting. And all I could remember was exactly what I'd seen. No one else had seen it. If they don't believe what I said, well, that's their pity, not mine. If I were totally honest, would say I sit squarely on the fence. I've always said that until I actually see a carcass or see one categorically myself, mm. um, that I'll probably hedge along the side of possibly, um, not really sure. Um, I just like that little bit more evidence, something just a bit firmed up to go, well, yeah, undoubtedly. Definitely, after my experience, I definitely think that they, are, they definitely exist. It's a little bit frightening. When, when they're around, um, you sort of get a bit worried when you are walking the dogs in the evening. It yeah. just seems something that's very odd. I'm quite convinced it's a, a, a big cat. Um, and I'm sort of hoping it's died out and is no longer, really. I know people um, who swear blind have seen big cats. Yeah. Um, maybe they have, maybe they haven't. Some of the people who say they do are very knowledgeable zoo people who yeah. should know what they're talking about. I've yet to see it. I'm not a true believer in the fact that there's big cats out there. I don't actually think there are. And I've only had one encounter and that was just by chance driving back through rural Essex back in 2000 <coughs> in uh, April when one walked across the road in front of me as I was coming into a village and that was a mountain lion of cougar for humour. Um, and it literally was almost in front of the bonnet as I stopped the car it was standing in front of me walking into the hedge. The people I've met on my journey to find the truth behind wildcat sightings in Britain are all certain of what they have seen or experienced. Now, obviously, there are still many people to convince about even the possibility of their existence. And until some real substantial evidence is brought forward, it will remain a great mystery. Sure, sure, sure.